Hey YouTube family, Mike Jones here back with another video on my channel where we talk about all things investing in personal finance with the genuine hope that you I will be able to inspire you to go ahead and get started with your financial freedom journey today. With that said, we are talking about Molson Coors Beverage Company. And um, before we go ahead and get right into that, I would like to take a moment to ask you if you would just take a short moment to smash that like button, hit the subscribe as well as maybe comment down below um, to let me know what you think about this video. Um, now, before we get started, I do want to say that, um, first I want to say thank you for the continued support, but I also want to say that um, this analysis series um, is not just to bring you um, stocks that I believe that you should invest in, but it's to get down to, nit to the nitty gritty of each company or stock um, respectively and um, give you all the facts and then you come to the decision yourself. I don't want to just hand out answers or um, tell you like, you know, what to do. I want to tell you everything, put it in front of you, give you all the facts and then give you my opinion on what you should do. And then you go ahead and you base your, uh, or, you know, choose your action off of um, the facts in my opinion. But with that said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Thank you for stopping by. And here we go. So we are Molson Coors Beverage Company. And as you can see, they have a whole bunch of nice little links for you to go ahead and cl click on right here. But we're actually going to go ahead and get started with their um, who we are. So we are Molson Coors Beverage Company. And for over two centuries, Molson Coors has been a brewing beverages that unite people to celebrate all life's moments from Coors Light, Miller Light, Molson Canadian, Carling, uh, Staropperman, to Coors Banquet, Blue Moon, Belgium White, Blue Moon Light Sky, Vizzy, uh, Lunic Hugels, uh, Summer Shandy, Cremor Springs, Hot Valley, and more. Moors, uh, Molson Coors produces many beloved and iconic brands while the company's history is rooted in beer wilson Coors offers a modern portfolio that expands beyond the beer aisle as well wilson Coors beverage company is a public tra publicly traded company that operates through Molson Coors north america and most of course europe and is traded on the new york and canadian stock exchange um, the company's commitment to raising industry standards and leaving a positive imprint on employees or yeah, employees, consumers, and communities, and the environment is reflected in our imprint and our 2025 uh, targets. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about their uh, sustainability uh, factors and stuff like that. Um, but first I wanted to go into their people. And so we're gonna go ahead and read this and we'll get into the sustainability part of it all. To confirm our commitment to our people, we are setting a measurable, measurable goals to show that we are really meeting our employees' needs and expectations, a fulfilling and challenging and exciting career in an inclusive and caring workplace. Diversity and inclusion. We know that when we support diversity within our company, we find new ways of working and bright ideas. We aim to foster a diverse uh, workforce that reflects the rich diversity of our cus uh, consumers, customers, and communities where we do business. In 2017, we launched a new global diversity and inclusion strategy linked directly to our strategic ambition and growth imperative. Uh, the strategy has four pillars, employees, consumers, customers, and communities. Over the uh, next three years, we aim to activate this new strategy in locally uh, relevant ways to better foster uh, inclusion and enhance employee engagement across our company. We've always been very pr uh, proud of the diverse company and are consistently looking for new ways to empower women to progress in their careers and are on our nurturing female leadership development. We currently have 34% female representation in management positions across the organization. In the US, we implement the Women in Beer program, an annual training program that promotes the development of high potential female leaders. 
We also launched regional Women's Day of Enrichment events throughout the course of the year for women in field sales roles to participate in networking and education. Safe Spaces Initiative. As we strive to create a brighter future for our employees and the people in the communities where we live and work, Most Encores is dedicated to listening, reflecting, and taking action to be a part of meaningful change. With our focus on creating a culture where everyone feels appreciated, respected, and valued, we have rolled out our Safe Spaces initiative. Safe Spaces gives our people the opportunity to individually acknowledge their commitment to ensuring Molson Corps is a place where everyone feels confident that they will not be exposed to discrimination or harassment. This initiative is one of the many steps Molson Corps is taking to make influential shifts to our culture. Our people can proudly convey they are a part of the initiative by displaying the Safe Spaces icon on their email signatures. Uh, the icon and upside down triangle inside of the circle symbolizes the allyship to those who have been marginalized as well as the community, uh, the commitment to empathy, inclusivity, and uh, unity. While the icon may seem like a small gesture, the message behind Safe Spaces has never been more important. Furthermore, Safe Spaces icon does not only signify our allyship for our most of course teammates, we also show allyship uh, is with our business partners, community members, and all those we reach. We hope by giving our people the opportunity to be a part of Safe Spaces and the share, share the icon, they can expressly share their commitment to the anti-racism, anti-harassment, and anti-discrimination with the world training for the future engaging and developing our people is the top priority at most in core's career paths and developmental opportunities are the cornerstone of employee engagement we encourage employees to continue to learn and develop their career at most in cores through our performance management process and our first choice learning center in person and online training programs enable our employees to build competencies share best practices and advance their leadership capabilities. Employee self-evaluations are calibrated by managers across functions to give a consistent global method for getting the right people with the right skills in the right roles at the right time. In addition, our talent management planning process reviews the current performance and future potential of all management employees. We believe we offer an outstanding uh, total compensation compensation package, including a competitive salary, result-based bonus program, and flexible benefits, enabling our employees to choose what's important for them. Employee wellness. We emphasize health and wellness as well as a work-life balance through flexible scheduling. We offer employees numerous health benefits tailored by business unit and work location. In some locations, this means employees choose medical plans, dental coverage, vision coverage, short-term disability, and long-term insurance. Most employees can participate in various aspects of our wellness program, which helps inform and, when possible, incentivizes health habits, uh, healthy habits and lifestyles. All of Most Core's business units comply with applicable minimum requ uh, required parental leave laws, and many go further with, to take care of new parents. Our U.S. operating units now provide a total of 16 weeks of fully paid maternity benefits. New fathers will also receive four weeks of fully paid leave. Protecting what matters. Health and safety at work is part of the global commitment to doing business the right way. Excuse me. The safety of wellness uh, the safety and wellness of our people is fundamental to their engagement, and we actively work to build a workplace culture that embraces wellness and safety. By 2025, we want to show our commitments in uh, action by achieving a 40% reduction in lost time accident rate. With that said, guys, we're going to go ahead and get into the brands, and they have a ton of brands. So let's go ahead and look at that. And if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button and hit the subscribe as these videos do take me a minute to go ahead and make. Um, but thank you for sticking around. Um, as you can see, we have Aguila, which I've never heard of, Apentinsco, I've never heard of, Aquarel, 
Arnold Palmer spiked half and half. Aspel, Astika, Barman Pilsner, uh, Bella Amory, Bergen Bear, Bergen Bear non alcoholic, Black Horse, Black Ice, Blue Moon, which everybody's heard of, Blue Moon Light Sky, Bohemian, which I've heard of, Borsudi, um, Brannick, Burgosco, Caffrey's, uh, Cape Line Sparkling Cocktails, Carling, Clearly Kombucha. Uh, which is huge right now. Um, Cobra, Colorado Native, Cool, Coors Banquet, Coors Edge, Coors Light, Coors Organic, Coors Pure, Coors Seltzer, Creamore Springs, Crispin Cider, which I know of, um, Crystal, Casquina, Extra Gold Lager, Foster's, Frasinskin Well, uh, George Killian's Irish Red, Granville's Island Brewing, Gross uh, Premium Lager, Hams, Henry Weinhardt's, Henry Weinhardt's Gourmet Sodas, Henry Weinhardt, or Henry's Hard Sodas, um, <clears throat> Herman Joseph, Private Reserve, Hot Valley, Huzza, Ice House, Indian Beer, Jelen, uh, Kamenitsa, Kamenitsa, uh, non alcoholic, Keystone, Laurentide, uh, Lick Premium, Linen Kugels, uh, Mad and Noisy, Mad Jack, Madri Exceptional, Mad Vine, Magnum, Mickey's, Miller Genuine Draft, Miller High Life, Miller Light, Miller 64, Milwaukee's Best, Molson Canadian, Molson Cold Shots, Molson Dry Lager, Molson XL, Molson Export L, Molson Stock L, Molson Ultra, Movo Wine Spritzers, uh, Nick Sicko, Narok, Pilsner, Old Vienna, Old English, Ostravar, Azuj, I don't even know how to say that, Pernstein, uh, Peroni, Pilsner, Urquell, Porter, Prava, Proof Point Seltzers, Red Dog, Reds, Reds Wicked, Record, Recorder Ling, or Recorder League, Revolver, Ricards, St. Archer, Sharps, Smith & Forge Hard Cider, Soul Cerveza, Sparks, Standard Lager, Star Promen, Star Promen Non-Alcoholic, Still Reserve, Taxis, um, Terrapin, Threefold, Tommy Slav, Tapa Chico, Hard uh, Seltzer, uh, Taisky Groni, Very Vel, Vizzy, Vine, Wanderoot, Winterfest and Worthingtons. So as you can see, they have a ton, a ton, ton of brands. And, you know, a lot of these I don't know, but a lot of them I do know. I would say there's about 10 to 12 brands in this list that I am familiar with. And a uh, shout out to them for their marketing and their advertising um, and, and making some of these brands uh, very popular in the U.S., um, so they have a pretty wide moat. Um, now, now it's time to look at the actual performance of the company over the, you know, since it's been a stock. And so we're going to go ahead and get into that. And before we get into that, I just want to say that sometimes uh, the company could be performing well, or I'll put it this way. The stock could be performing well, but the company isn't performing well. And sometimes the company could be performing well and the stock isn't performing well. So the stock is not an indicator of how the company is performing. Um, I do want to just go ahead and uh, say that before we get into it. But as you can see here, <clears throat> we have Molson Coors Beverage uh, Class B, and it's at $52.34 in the last or today. It was down 1.11% or 59 cents lost today. Um, in the last five days, it was up 7% uh, with $3.52 earned <clears throat> in the last month. Uh, and it's up almost 17% with $7.49 earned. In the last six months, it's up 59.67% and has gained $19.56 a share. Um, in the last year or in the year to date, it's up 14.5% with $6.69 gained. In the last year, 
It's up 34% with $13.33 gained a share in the last five years, up or down 46%, uh, meaning it's lost $44.61 over that time. And then lastly, the max is always ridiculous. But as you can see here, in the last five years, it's actually lost almost half of its position. And now I can't tell you exactly why that is, because they do have some really, really popular brands in in the company. But uh, it just seems to not, as far as the, the stock itself, seems to not be performing particularly well. Um, now, I'm not saying that that should stop you from investing in it. But what, what I would say is that maybe uh, be a little more cautious on investing in this company. Here you can see everything is practically in the red. Now, part of that is due to the pandemic. Um, it, the pandemic pretty much hit everybody at some point um, as far as companies go. And so the fact that this is all in the red doesn't truly surprise me. Now, when you're looking at the year's range, it's not uh it's not crazy volatile but it's also a little more volatile than you you know your consistent stocks that are your go-to's um the market cap is actually really good at 11 uh billion dollars um now particularly you would like that to be in the 100 billions but billion is always a good sign the volume is not bad at 2.881 million um, and then they have a dividend yield of 4.36%. Uh, now, <clears throat> when we go to Webull, I've also brought it up right here with its advanced stats. As you can see, the PE ratio is in the negative. It's negative 11.95 or negative 12. Um, usually this is an indication that the company has not uh, made profit in a while. Um may be heading towards bankruptcy. Now, it, it's kind of hard to imagine that uh, this particular company is heading towards bankruptcy with popular brands like Coors and, you know, all the popular brands that they have that are in the U.S. that I know people are buying on a regular basis. Um, so I'm not worried about it going bankrupt. But as far as it, uh, being fully aggressive in investing and buying 100 shares of this company, that's not something that I would personally do. If I was to buy this company, it would be uh, something that I would invest in that was like around maybe five shares of this company. Now, it says 0% here um, for the dividend yield. Now, I think that's because it's actually on, because <clears throat> there's a tap, uh, a class A and a class B share. Uh, we are on the class B share, so I'm not sure why it's not showing it, but let me see what happens if I go to the class A share. It also doesn't show it here. So apparently uh, Webull just doesn't have the stats for um, this particular company as far as dividends go, but with 4% um, dividend yield, it's approximately um, paying out about $2 a share while its earnings per share is also in the negative, which means that that dividend <clears throat> uh, going forward is probably not going to be very uh, consistent. Now, when we look at the payout history, they actually had a pretty fantastic history um, starting all the way back from 1995. They've been very consistent with their, sorry, I'm trying to show you. They've been very consistent with their dividend payouts since 1995 i don't know why it's not okay here we go since 1995 they've been very consistent with their dividend payouts paying out a minimum of quarterly every year since 1995 until 2020 where you see that you know the calendar year payout growth was negative 71 percent and here is a great indicator of what's happened days taken for stock price to recover 222 days um, when you look at the rest it's not even close to that so that is the reason why um, they had to really cut the dividend um, and not make it consistent anymore
But up to that point, it was about 20 something years of consistent dividends, 24 years of consistent dividends before uh, 2020. So I expect them to fully get back on track, uh, you know, by the by the beginning of 2022. Um, I think by then we'll start to see recovery in almost every stock that's been hit in a major way. But with that said, I would only invest uh, about $250 into this company, getting about five shares um, just to have it because it it is a company that is going to grow in the long term. I truly believe that. And I do believe that they will get back to that consistent dividend payout. But at this current time, um, it's not the best choice. There are better choices in the alcohol bev uh, sector. So we'll be talking about a couple more of those in other videos. But if you have watched the whole thing and stayed to the end, I really, really appreciate you. Um, this, like I said, it takes a minute for me to go ahead and make these videos and edit them and get them out to you guys. So it would be greatly appreciated if you'd at least smash that like button, hit the subscribe, um, leave a comment about what you thought about all of this. Am I doing a great job analyzing uh, these stocks and these companies? Um, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much and God bless.